awesome. Cool, everything's bigger. No, it isn't. It's the same size. It's just dark in here. I think the world's got 3D. No way. You're all wrong. Everything's pink. Pink? Anyone can see it's blue. Wait a minute, everybody. Hold on, guys. Thank you. Now we're going to use those in just a minute when we learn about something called autism. But for now, let's take off the glasses and introduce ourselves. Hi, I'm Tyler. And I'm Brooke. I'm James. I'm Kim. I'm Leticia. I'm Maria. I'm Peter. I'm Han. Great, now you can put the glasses back on again. You're all seeing the same world, but it seems different to each of you. So it's a little hard to understand each other. It's hard to communicate, and that can be frustrating. But that's kind of what it's like for people who have autism. Okay, now you can take them off. So, who knows what autism is, what it means when someone has autism? Peter, do you mean artistic, where the person likes to draw and paint and make things? No, 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 not artistic. We're talking about someone who has autism. Kim? Does it have to do with cars, like autos? Another good guess, but no. People are born with autism, which changes the way they experience the world. They may hear, feel, or see things differently, or behave in ways that seem unusual to us. Do any of you have someone with autism in your class, or in your school, or in your family? My brother has autism. Well, you can all help us as we find out more about this. And we're also going to hear from some more people like you, James, who have brothers and sisters with autism. Everyone who has been around someone who has autism has probably noticed that they act differently from the rest of us. And that's because they see the world differently. Like all of you here did when you had the sunglasses on. Now let's check out what it's really like to have autism. We're going to use the special power of video to take you inside the mind of someone who has it so that you can understand how the world looks, feels, and sounds to a person with autism. And then we're going to learn a little bit more about what autism is so that we can help out the people we know who have it. Okay, now put your glasses on, but hang on. Here we are. Pretty cool, huh? Yeah. yeah. How about a nice round of applause? That's kind of a nice, happy sound. The sound of hands clapping, isn't it? Yeah, yeah that sounds good to me. But to someone with autism, it may not be nice at all. Ready? You may want to cover your ears. It can be downright scary, and that's why, and that's why you sometimes see children with autism cover their ears or scream when they hear a noise like a class bell or a PA announcement in school. Okay, on to our next stop. Guys, we'll be right back. Children with autism often see light differently than the rest of us. This room is sort of dark with the lights turned off. But with the lights on, it seems just right. But to some with autism, these lights might seem like they're flickering on and off, and it can be very distracting to them. Like this. Things even feel different to children with autism. Just picking up a pencil might be really hard because it might feel like they're wearing heavy winter gloves. And just try writing with gloves on. It's not easy. OK, let's get the full effect. That was fast, wasn't it? So you could say the world can be a pretty scary place for children with autism. And now you can understand why they might act a little differently than the rest of us sometimes, and why they might need a little extra help to get through the day. Some may even have a special helper or a special assistant in class to help them. And sometimes, they might need to spend some time in smaller classrooms to get this help. But all of us can help these children be part of the classroom team. So the more we know about autism, the better we can help. So let's find out a little more about it. I was wondering, can you catch autism from someone who has it? Not at all. Autism is not contagious. You can't catch it like a cold from germs. And you can't catch it by being around someone who has it, not by touching them or handing them a book or a pencil. And no one dies from autism. If you can't catch it, then how do people get it? Some people are just born with autism, like people are born with blue eyes or allergies or even hearing problems. Scientists aren't sure what causes autism, but they do know that doesn't happen because of anything the child did. Do they outgrow it when they get older? Autism never really goes away, but children with autism will grow up just like we will and have a job and hobbies. How can you tell if someone has autism? 
Well, everyone with autism is unique, just like the rest of us are. You could say each person is as different as a snowflake, but there's some things that a lot of them do. Some might get kind of excited and talk loudly and repeat themselves a lot. Others don't talk at all. Most people with autism have problems communicating. It might seem like they're ignoring you or just that they didn't even hear you at all, but they're probably just working very hard on what they're doing. It's like when you get so intent on something, you don't even hear your mom calling you. They're not purposely ignoring you, they're just super focused. And sometimes, children with autism seem to have unusual ways of expressing themselves. They might make strange noises, like very loud or high-pitched sounds, or they might repeat something you just said, or laugh when no one else is laughing, but that's just their way of communicating. Last year, my family and I went on a vacation to France. Since I don't speak French, I had a hard time communicating with the kids there. Maybe kids with autism think we're speaking another language. You know, that's a good way to think about it. People with autism are trying to communicate with us, but we don't really know their language and they don't know ours. And they might make gestures that seem a little strange, like rocking back and forth, or flapping their hands, or spinning, or humming. They might even hit themselves or throw things, but they're not trying to hurt anyone. It's just a part of having autism. They're trying to calm themselves down when they get upset. What are some of the things you do when you're nervous? I play with my hair. I bite my nails. I tap my fingers on my desk. Exactly. It's the same kind of thing. And some people with autism need everything to be the same each day. They like routines, like standing in the same place in line, wearing the same clothes, or maybe eating the same thing for lunch. That way they know what's going to happen next. It makes them feel calmer. Well, I'd like to have PB&J every day for lunch, except sometimes my mom packs me a bologna sandwich. Yuck! Then you can understand. And something else we can all relate to. People with autism sometimes get really into a certain thing, like a book or a TV show or a video game. I could definitely relate to that. My dad says I'm obsessed with video games. But the guy in our class who has autism seems like he wants to play alone. He doesn't seem to want to be friends with us. And if you talk to him, he won't really look at you. He kind of looks away. They're not trying to be rude or unfriendly. People with autism just don't always know the right thing to do or say. They might not even know they should say hello or take turns in a conversation. Sometimes they're just in their own little world and don't know that your world can be fun too. James? Well, like I said, my brother has autism and sometimes it may seem like he doesn't want to talk to you, but it's just part of having autism. He does want to be friends, even though it might not be in the typical way you and I could be friends. James is right. People with autism may not speak the same language we do, but they do want to communicate and understand. Well, what can we do to help them? One thing is, we definitely shouldn't tease them or make fun of them. That hurts everyone's feelings. But now let's hear from some people with experience and get some good ideas. Jesse is my little brother and he makes me really proud all the time. He does his best in school and when he plays sports. He was on a soccer team and he was actually one of the star he was actually the star player. My brother likes he like he loves school because he's really good at math and he likes to play on the computer. There's nothing really different about my brother and He's a lot of fun. I'd rather have him than any other brother. Most of the time, like I said, I'll give him piggyback rides when I'm having fun with him, and sometimes he'll like dunk me onto the couch or something. Um, the thing me and my brother do out most outside of school is um, play the video games. It's not his fault that he's like that. It's because he has a disability. Some people just need to learn how to accept it, and everybody's different, and you're your own unique person, and people just need to get over themselves and realize that everybody's different. Something important for the kids to know when they do start teasing him is that he has feelings like everyone else, even though he has a disability. It definitely helps when I explain things to people about my brother. I wish that everyone could know that people with autism are just like everyone else and you can make friends with them, you know, you can have good times, you can do whatever.
So now that we know a little more about autism, are any of you going to do anything different in school? I'm definitely going to try to include Bill, the guy in our class, even if I just say hi to him each day. And I won't be mad or sad if he doesn't say anything back. I'm going to sit near Ron, the boy with autism in our class. Because now I know that you can't catch autism from someone who has it, and I know that kids with autism really want to have friends. I'll try to put myself in Trisha's shoes, because now I understand that what she's hearing may be different from what I'm hearing. If Mark in our class has an outburst, I'm just going to try to ignore it, because now I know that he can't help it. It's just his way of trying to calm himself down. Those sound like excellent plans. We've all learned a lot about autism and how people who have it see the world very differently than we do. And we've learned what we can do to make sure the world we share is the best kind of place we can make it, no matter how we see it. <laughs>